In this segment, we're taking a look at David Lesher, a name familiar to many people in Fort Collins, because Lesher Middle School takes his name, and this is the 50th birthday of Lesher Middle School. Uh, Lesher was a very long-term administrator, superintendent of schools, and he served as the last superintendent of District Number 5, which was the Fort Collins School, and then after the Pooter School District, R1 was created. He was then appointed superintendent, first superintendent of that school district. Lesher is portrayed today by Richard Cox, who is a member of our cemetery stroll committee and lived in Fort Collins for the past 15 years and has an avid interest in history. So let's take a look at this segment. My name is David Barnes Lesher. I was born in 1896 in Denver, Colorado. My sister Mabel, my brother, and I spent most of our childhood growing up in La Junta. After I graduated from high school, I went to Colorado College in Colorado Springs, where I was a business administration major, and I played football. My time in college was interrupted briefly, though, by World War I. In 1917, I joined the Army. At first, I was with the Corps of Engineers, and I did surveying down by the Mexican border. Then I wound up as a master sergeant in a machine gun battalion at Camp Lewis in Washington State. When the war was over, I resumed my studies, and I graduated from Colorado College in 1921. I met my wife, and we got married shortly thereafter, and we were married for 60 happy years. Now, when I got out of school in 21, the economy was uh, not doing too well. The country was going through a severe recession, and gee whiz, you'd be lucky to get a job for $75, $85 a week. So uh, I was down in Denver one day, and an old friend came up to me, and he said, there's a coaching job down in Rocky Ford for $150 a week if you want it wouldn't want that, $150 a week. So I went down to Rocky Ford, and I coached, and I taught, and I had a great time. It was a great experience. I wasn't expecting it. I loved the kids. But after a couple of years, the economy picked back up, and Florence and I moved to Fort Collins, and I worked at the Great Western Sugar Plant. The whole time I was here in town, though, I never really forgot about football. I'd go and see the, watch the Fort Collins High kids play out on Lampkins Field, Watch the Aggies play on the weekend. One day I just said, the hell with it. I'm going back. I'm going back to coaching. I'm going back to teaching. I did, and I don't, didn't, never regretted it. Went down to Deer Trail, then went to Laird, went back to Deer Trail. Eventually wound up in Ray, Colorado, where I was superintendent. I was there all the way until 1944, when the folks in Fort Collins offered me the position of superintendent of schools for Fort Collins School District Number 5. So Florence and I moved back to Fort Collins. We had a daughter, Doris Ann. She was already living here. She was a sophomore at Colorado A&M. She'd been sick that year, though. The doctor said it was uh, blood poisoning or something. And a few, few weeks or a few months after I started working here, she got much worse. And she wound up in the hospital. The doctors thought the only thing that was going to be able to help her was the new drug, penicillin. That was pretty hard to come by back then. Most of it was going over to the war effort. But our doctors were able to get a special civilian release of penicillin. And they flew it out from Chicago. A state trooper drove it up from Denver. And Doris Ann became the first person in Fort Collins ever to get the wonder drug penicillin. Fortunately, it didn't work. And uh, we lost our Doris Ann that year. And that, was a, that was a tough beginning to our time in Fort Collins. It wasn't long before World War II was over with, though, and big changes came to the town. The GI Bill paid for folks to go back to college, servicemen to go back to college. We had a lot of people moving into town. A lot of them had families and small kids. It wasn't long before the schools were bursting at the seam. I remember one year, the first and second grade classes doubled in size from one year to the next. We needed new schools, and we needed a way to pay for them. Now, I'd always heard that Fort Collins was a pretty tough place to raise taxes, but we put a bond measure on the ballot in 1948. Now, I'll never forget, we had a parade one weekend. We had all the school kids out marching. We had a flatbed truck and a girl sitting at a school desk. And she had a sign in front of her, and it said, I cost you $150 a year, and I'm worth it. Well, you know what? The bond measure passed. In 1949, we built our first new elementary school in many years in Fort Collins. That was Dunn Elementary School. Anybody here go to Dunn? 
Dunn was a first for a lot of different reasons. You know, up until that time, schools were square boxes, two-story boxes with stairwells that could be a death trap in a fire. Dunn was different. It was modern. It was all one level, and every classroom had its own door to the outside. And every school we built after that followed that same model. And we built three more elementary schools while I was superintendent, Putnam, Moore, and Bennett. And we built a junior high in 1960, and they named that after me, Jun uh, David Lester Junior High. But you know, in the 40s and the 50s, kids needed more than just new schools. They needed something to do after school, something to do on weekends. Some kids just needed the basic essentials in life. So I was with the Elks Club back then, and <clears throat> we, uh, a bunch of us got together and worked on some assistance funds, and we would buy uh, clothing or supplies or even medical care for underprivileged kids. Now, if you look at all the great recreational facilities here at City Park, you know, outside of the high school and the college, they didn't have anything like that in town back then. So three or four of us got together, and we started the City Recreation Commission, and we worked with the schools, and we uh, raised money, we built facilities, we started programs, and that was the beginning of recreation in Fort Collins. And eventually, the city took it over. I was pretty busy in the 40s and 50s, as you can probably tell. I actually I went back to school too. I got a master's degree at DU and I got my doctorate in education at the Teachers College in Greeley. I was so busy in the 50s that uh, 1957 I, I had a heart attack and right after I got a, the hospital they gave me the Community Builder of the Year Award and I think they were worried I wasn't going to be around long <laughs> enough to give it to. And all I said is because I work like hell. But you know in the 50s there were 30 school districts in Larimer County, 30. Every little rural school, Waverly, Stowe Prairie, the, the plumber school out on, uh, I think it's called East Vine now. Those were their own school districts. And so there was a big push by the state in the 50s to consolidate all those smaller schools into larger districts, larger schools, more programs, more opportunities for the kids. So we uh, set out to do that here. And there was some opposition, but we put it to the voters and it passed. And in 1960, those 30 school districts were consolidated into three. Park, Thompson Valley, and Poudre School District R1. And I became the first superintendent of Poudre School District in 1960. We built several schools, elementary schools, and a junior high while I was superintendent. But we still only had the one high school here in Fort Collins. That was Fort Collins High. So the one last thing I did as superintendent was to get a bond measure going that would fund a new high school. And that passed, and in 1964, Poudre High School opened up as the second high school in Fort Collins. I retired in 1962. I kept busy in the community. I was with the United Way and worked on the Centennial Committee in 1964. I should have taken up golf. I have no shortage of golf balls now. <laughs> but I always look back with the most pride and the most fondness of my time as a teacher and my time with the school district. And I'm, I like to think that I helped a generation of local kids build stronger minds, 